Mine looks nastier than yours. Holy boy, I have no idea. Uh, a lot of coronavirus going on here, guys. Wow, come get you some. Keep that for later, I might snack on that A lot of fish, man. See all the fish. All right, I'll say let's let's do a little kind of like 20 questions. It's not gonna be 20 questions, but I got some questions about ledge fishing. You know, we caught some fish, and it's funny because I didn't catch as many as you, but we're we're doing literally like the way I caught my fish versus the way you caught fish is 100 opposite. Like you caught the majority of yours, like power cranking. I caught mine kind of finesse fishing. What's your philosophy? You know, Gunner Reel is a hugely pressured lake. What's your philosophy when you roll up on a school, see like 10, 15, maybe 20 dots down there? What's your first grab or do you analyze are these fish are gonna be weird? Like should I go easy on them first and throw finesse? Like how do you approach that? Early in the year I like usually try to start out with power fishing like cranking or you know throwing a big swim bait in there But really it's dictated like when you see them on your graph how they're related to the bottom It is really dictated on whether or not what I'm gonna throw But today it's definitely been the the big crank baby early in the year that seems to be the way to go. You start off with a big crankbait, then come back with something finesse, drag something if they ain't wanting to fire. I want to show you his crankbait because I was telling him I want a pair of shorts that look like this crankbait. Dude, check this thing out. Like, I don't even know. It definitely catches fish, but it catches my eye. That is, well, you have used it, dude. He's yeah, all big, little, though. She's like that pretty. Blue. That's an 8XD, right? This is an 8XD in sexy green shad. It's a color they came out with last year. It's been working pretty good. It's not my favorite, but it seems to be the one they want right now. So next thing, as long as we're talking about crankbaits, so I think we kind of went through this, but I want to get it on video so you guys hear it. I'm a strong believer in throwing 10 pound fluorocarbon up to an 8XD. Uh, once you get to a 12XD or something like that, like I go to 12, sometimes maybe I'll go to 14, but like usually I stay pretty light. What's your philosophy on like line diameter and like, like what are you throwing? So I define it as like 6XD style baits, you got your 8XD was kind of like a mid range, and then you got your 10XD. What's your your line setup on on those different styles? I'm like you on an 8XD up to an 8XD. I like 10 pound test. I just feel like it, it gets to the depth, the optimum depth that way. But when it comes to a 10XD, I definitely try to bump it up to 14. It's just such a heavier bait. You got to throw it on a heavier rod. 14, it'll still get down there to that 25. And uh, that's probably that's probably the lightest I'll go on a 10 XD is 14 pound test. So if you guys watch videos, you probably saw a video I put up many years ago called the most hated rig in fishing. And it's not because everybody hates it, it's because I hate it. I don't hate it. I recognize its value, but a lot of people threw it on some of the deep water lakes that I was fishing. So like, I like to try to think outside the box and do some different stuff. So I always tried to avoid it. And that, that's a Carolina rig. But I was talking to Miles and Miles is a guide. So he's fishing for himself like in the sense that he wants to like catch bigs and like you know get on a mega bag like he did back in february and that but at the same time he's also thinking about clients and stuff like that you know people who maybe don't have a huge amount of fishing experience so a couple rigs that really play into that we always think of the drop shot the ned and really a carolina rig is like uh, too. and miles why don't you break this down because your rig down in florida we throw like a rig that has a pretty long leader miles has got a shorter leader he's got a bait on it that i like he's got a little burner crop but break that thing down and, and why it's why you need a freaking ball and chain out here on the tva it really stays on the bottom that's the thing like a lot of times when they're ripping a lot of current these fish are related to the bottom but uh like he's saying you know just a you know, two foot leader burner crawl and a little two out three out gamma got to ewg three quarter ounce you can go all the way up to an ounce and a quarter glass bead nothing special not pegged i mean this is old school you and grandpa fishing right here man <laughs> this is it this is an old ball and chain but it gets the answers and it gets the right answers at times too but on any river system i go to in north alabama in middle alabama anywhere i have a ball and chain on at all times it's just it's just my confidence bait on a river. So this might sound like kind of minutia, but I noticed that you do have a lead weight on there. I tried to throw tonks in a few times when I throw a ball and chain, and it breaks my heart every time I break it off. Because part of the reason that you throw a Carolina rig is you can throw it in anything, dude. Whether it's slick bottom, whether you got a giant tree, like it'll it'll ride through most of that stuff. But do you use one thing that I started doing is using steel weights mm -hmm. and brass weights. Does that make any difference to you, or do you just go lead because it's simple and cheap, straight? The reason I use lead is because 
you're gonna lose these man like that's the thing lead is cheap i can still feel everything you can yes using tungsten and steel you get a lot more feel out of it if i was on a new lake maybe looking feeling around on the bottom i would definitely start with a tungsten but being around here man i know where everything is <laughs> Listen so, to this guy. call him up get yeah. a guide trip boys because he does <laughs> but lead is the way to go it's cheaper it just is more economical and you can still feel everything all right so last thing about the carolina rig because i i don't want to talk about it. i'm just joking but but you brought up an interesting thing and actually i've done it too so there's two baits or two well one bait and one rig that are excellent for offshore fishing when you're not really super reliant on the graph say fish are spread out or if you're just fishing structure and miles mentioned earlier the carolina rig really acts what do you call it like the oldest sonar in the book or something <laughs> dude like that is the coolest way to put it because what a carolina rig does is it fishes through anything and really translates what's on the bottom like you can fish it through grass and know there's grass down there you can bump it off of rocks you can bump it off a shell fish it through a tree like pile or whatever and actually the same goes for a crankbait to an extent like you need to have a crankbait that's going to hit the bottom and they do hang up more but both of those rigs when you're doing this offshore fishing like if you're not super good with the graph you know like and you're going through a process and you're like hey i really want to learn what my graph is showing me those two rigs having them tied up scan something and go and pick them up and throw them and you're going to know what the bottom is like you know what's what if the fish are there because they're going to bite one of those dude and then you're also going to know like is there cover is there grass is there whatever but they, they're really what do you what do you got to add well, like, say you pull up, you find your shell bed, right? Well, you cast way over here. I'm not feeling nothing over here. Cast over here. Oh, I'm starting to feel it again. You can really dial in where the beginning and end of any structure is. Yeah. That's that's one of the main reasons I always have one tied on. It's not just because it catches fish, but like you were saying, it's an old school depth finder, bro. It'll let you know where the hard bottom starts and ends, and then you can sit there and pick them apart with other part. baits if you have to, you know? But that's, that's an excellent point, man. Because a lot of times out here too, and actually we're noticing it today, like the fish are starting to really pot up, but they're they're not like super tight, dude. They're kind of spread out. And if you're just going to fish them structure, like Carolina rig is going to catch them and you're going to be able to like pick that stuff apart, slow drag it. It's going to be up off the bottom. They're going to eat it, dude. Part of the reason I hate a Carolina rig is that it works so well. Like it, it's a super great rig to fish on any body of water, but it allows you to kind of like sit on stuff and pick it apart. And you're going to be able to make a long cast because you got that big weight on there and cover a lot of water and pick things apart at the same time but enough of this talk dude you give enough enough secrets dude i'm gonna probably have to tie on a ball and chain but we're gonna get back after it all right